Hey guys, welcome to Red Circle. We're another fantastic chemistry video, and today we're going to talk about dipole moments and poly, poly electronegativity. Let's get into it. Dipole moments. A dipole moment is defined as the amount of charge separation, delta, multiplied by the bond length. Charge separation is showed by electrostatic potential maps, which is what you're seeing right here. Now, in a, this type of map, the red part is the more negative. The blue and the, the, the cooler part, the bluer parts, are the more delta positive side. So now, if you take a look at this right here, you'll see the symbol delta negative and delta positive. That means slight positive charge, slight negative charge on that bond. Now, what's causing this separation of charges or this, or this delta negative, delta positive? Poly electronegativity. Now, electronegativities are very simple concept. It's essentially an elements or an atom's attraction to its own electrons or to the electrons that are in its shell, in its shells, including the bond electrons. Okay. Now it goes from basically zero or you know point one or something to four, four being the highest. Now fluorine is the element with the highest electronegativity. It really wants to hold its electrons tightly. As you go to the left. Through a period, electronegativity goes down. As you go down a group, electronegativity goes down. So in other words, the bigger the atom, the lower its electronegativity because the, uh, the electrons are literally further away. They're literally further away. Okay? So now, when two atoms with similar electronegativities are bonded together, such as carbon and hydrogen, the difference in electronegativity is not great enough to cause delta negatives and delta positives to occur. Okay, so those are called a nonpolar because the charge, the charge, the delta negatives and delta positives aren't significant. When atoms that have a huge difference in electronegativity bond, say hydrogen and oxygen, you will get charge separation. You'll get delta negatives and delta positives because oxygen is more electronegative. It's pulling the electrons towards itself causing the hydrogen to lose the electron slightly, and it, the hydrogen becomes delta positive, the oxygen becomes slightly negative. And this is just how it works, guys. Okay? Now, if you have a really big difference, such as a metal to a nonmetal, like lithium to fluoride, that difference is so great that the fluorine will actually steal the electron from the lithium, and the lithium will gladly give it away. Okay? That's electronegativity. And that's, in a nutshell, how it works. Okay? Now, there's a lot more to it, obviously. You guys took General Chemistry 1 and 2. If you don't remember it, go back and review those notes. Those notes are invaluable to you. Everything you learn there, a lot of the things you learn there, you need here. Trust me. Now, I'm going to leave it there. That's electronegativity. Just a quick introduction to it. We're going to come back. We're going to do formal charge. We're going to spend a little bit of time on formal charge because it's so important and it's so easy to do. You may as well just learn how to do it. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Good luck. Good chemistry. See you soon.